Okay, my name is Lindsay Grace, and I'm going to talk to you about a paper called Esports as Evolution Shifting Social Value in Sports. So when we talk about play in this context, we often think of it as proxy and as practice. Uh, this perspective is supported by anthropology, sociology, and psychology, uh, as referenced. And the idea here is that play actually has an evolutionary necessity, one that is true of animals and of the human animal. And the idea is that play is for practice. Uh, basically, historically, if we look at the literature on uh, events like the original Olympics, what we see is that the people practicing a variety of useful skills uh, like combat sports. So you understand practicing javelin as throwing weapons. You interpret fighting sports like boxing and wrestling as explicitly that, preparation for war. And um, when you think of things like the marathon, you should see the analogy to message relay and communicating between uh, locations. And so one of the ideas that you see time and time again when you look at the analysis of sport and sport tradition is this idea of sport as practice, as a way of sort of doing battle without having to affect people's um, real lives. And so the idea here is that practice serves um, uh, as a kind of proxy, that uh, this kind of play mm -hmm. it allows us to practice the physics of war, uh, as well as practicing and proxying uh, things like the mental challenges of war and dominance. This is an excerpt from uh, H.J.R. Murray's uh, introduction to chess, where he explicitly says in the first, in the very first uh, passage of the book, historically, chess must be classed as a game of war. In addition, you can see that sport is a proxy to demonstrating power uh, or asserting social and ideological dominance. And so the idea here, uh, you'd see time and time again, is that play offers a safe space for practice of valued skills and demonstration. So what then does the growth of esports in this context mean? Well, we can look at sport as often about proving superiority or efficacy, as Cal uh, expressed many, many years ago. And we can also look at um, the value of witnessing and spectating sports. So the idea is fundamentally that well-watched popular sports are somehow culturally important um, to the world and to society. And so uh, you might compare volleyball, which is rather popular, to Hoover ball, a derivation of volleyball that is nowhere near the following. And this is one of the common claims we see in the esports world, that esports is big, therefore it has value to society as shown in this competition. Uh, but it's also important to recognize that competitive gaming is more than 40 years old. So why then is there a rise now? Uh, research question one, and my primary research question, is really just about this. If most sports are to be understood as practice for real world skills to which society has recognized some version of evolutionary benefit, then how does esports fit into the evolution of such values? And why now? So one lens from which to uh, perceive this question is to look at evolutionary psychology and its arguments towards natural selection and fitness. And so generally, when you look at sport through evolutionary psychology, we understand that sport affords the demonstration of physical fitness, mental aptitudes, and emotional characteristics, emotional control. And so in this practice, in this performance, the idea is that the alpha behaves uh, in a safe environment, and then anyone who is not alpha, who's not winning, uh, isn't dying, they simply lose. And so you could ask, well, then what does esports demonstrate? From an evolutionary perspective, you could actually say that it emphasizes more of the mental aptitudes and um, aptitudes and emotional characteristics. So sport, esport, affords the demonstration of these. And then the idea then would be that esports are about the ability to exploit artificial intelligence systems to work within limited or with limited resources to solve complex problems or to show mental prowess, uh, ideally in real time over others who are supposed to be equally adept. It is a kind of representation of strength, a representative strength, but strength of mind. But you could be critical of that observation and say some sports don't directly relate to evolutionary selection. As an example, NASCAR, which really started as a way of auditioning smugglers in the US when um, alcohol prohibition existed, is not really about um, some of those other uh, evolutionary benefits. And to that, another lens is useful. And from that one, it's the, the lens of social value. When we look at social value, what we're looking at is, for example, the idea of esports as a kind of human computer interaction or esports is a sort of sport for geek culture, that the social identity of geek culture is attributed to it. And it's unique to it and distinct to it in its own generation, in much the way you might reference something like swing dancing or 1950s sock hops in the US. 
And so the core concept here is that esports kind of form an identity and they're a sport around which the identity can be um, can kind of be brandished in much the way you see the folks wearing their um, team jerseys here at an esports competition. So for this uh, to make sense, you kind of need to position it against some um, Baudrillard and particularly Simulacra Simulation, where Baudrillard kind of emphasizes the sense of a cultural self as both shaped by the historic realities of that culture and those attributes um, to which others have ascribed it. And so there's been lots of critique in the last 10, 15 years about the way that Hemingway portrays bullfighting and that it may actually be a kind of affirming sport that is also subject to a projected identity through his fiction, the masculinity of bullfighting. And you could see the same sort of patterns and things like the royal affirmation, um, the idea that polo is a kind of king sport. And so the idea here is to remind people that identity is not only emergent or projected, but it's also assumed. One sort of says, I will take this identity or this social um, uh, community. And so from that perspective, it's interesting to consider esports as kind of the athletics of the mind. Uh, to which one might say, sure, we have this in um, chess, uh, namely sort of the, the Cold War era chess, where we've got these major tournaments that are actually demonstrating the win or loss of ideologies of whole nations. Uh, and one of the things that I think is distinct about that is that if you look at it, uh, it has similar spectating to uh, the history of uh, or current state of esports, uh, but uh, doesn't quite have that emphasis on athleticism. And so the whole idea here is to try and encourage people to understand that perhaps this is a harbinger, an indicator of some kind of social transition. Perhaps there is an esports evidence of an evolution in value that may be moving towards something that's a little more emphasized on mind as opposed to body. And so um, in conclusion, the way the paper wraps is really just kind of helping people understand that the future of esports might then actually be an indication of a future for general society. And that there are sort of these advantages of mental capacity that are being emphasized in esports that may not be emphasized in other sport activities. Thank you, I'm happy to answer any questions. I hope that was a uh, good use of your time. Thank you.